discussing his suspicions, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. I'm telling you, Molly, the guy is a spy. Every place I go, there he is, snapping pictures. Click, 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 all day long with that little camera. Well, where, for instance? Outside the Elks Club, and down by the bridge, near the railroad station, the powerhouse, and every place. Well, I don't know, McGee. Somehow I can't think of the Elks Club as a military objective. <laughs> Though it might be classified as an ammunition dump. What you mean? <laughs> well, there's so much lead sitting around there. <laughs> But the bridge and the powerhouse and the railroad station, them are all military objections. For that matter, uh, wh- <laughs> what were you doing around the railroad station and the powerhouse and the bridge? I was to all them places on business. What business? Well, I had to go to the station to mail an important letter. Wanted to get it off on the 142. Whom were you sending it to? The National College of Self-Improvement in Harmonica Playing. <laughs> You'll admit my harmonica playing could be improved. <laughs> I'll confess that without being tortured. (laughs) But uh, what were you doing at the power station? There was a bunch of linemen down there installing a new transformer. Yes? Yes. I've always been fascinated the way them guys can climb up a telephone pole with them spurs of theirs. (laughs) One guy, a fellow named Joe, got a sliver in his leg. and Remind me to send flowers, dearie. (laughs) But uh, I still don't know what you were doing there. I was watching them, doggone it. A guy can't sit around the Elks playing rummy all day long, can he? And there was this guy with his little clamor. Click, click, click. All day long. <laughs> you know what first made me suspicious of him? What? Every time I'd look at him, he'd look away. Oh, my. Yeah. McGee, I love you, but don't get the idea that everybody who doesn't like to look at you for hours at a time is a foreign spy. <laughs> Heavenly days, the whole country will wind up in a concentration camp. And just the same, there was something fishy about that guy. I think he's another Harry Matty. A what? A Harry Matty. You know, a, a spy. <laughs> Harry Matty was shot in the last war when they caught her trying to conceal... No, no, huh? that was Matta Harry. I can't be bothered with little details about... Come in. Oh, hi, Latrivia. Why, hello, Mr. Mayor. Good day, Mr. McGee. Hello, McGee. Do I understand that you called my office this morning? I certainly did, Latrivia. They told me you were in a council meeting and couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be disturbed, I believe, she said. Well, what's the difference? You don't seem to realize, Latrivia, that we're working, that you're working for us. We pay you. You're just a public servant, and we're the public. When we want something, you ought to snap out of it. Don't... Huh? Don't talk like that to Mayor Latrivia. What'd you call him for, anyway? Yes, I'd like to know, too, McGee. Like most taxpayers, you seem to labor under the delusion that public officials should come running to wipe your little noses every time you sneeze. If Mrs. McGee will pardon my plain speaking. (laughs) (laughs) Mrs. McGee loves it. (laughs) Look, Latrivia, I wanted to report a suspicious-looking guy that's hanging around town. McGee, if we arrested every odd-looking man in this town, Wistful Vista would soon be known as the Deserted Village. It would be a ghost town. Well, McGee thinks this man was a spy, Mr. Mayor. He is a spy, I'm convinced. He takes pictures, click, 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 all day long, of everything of importance in this town. He's been following me for two days now. He carries a camera under his coat. Does he look intelligent? No. He looks like he'd had nothing above his eyes but sinus trouble. <laughs> but that don't mean that... He... I'm inclined to take it lightly myself, Mr. Latrivia, but maybe it would be better to investigate. Very well, I'll have him picked up for questioning. Uh, do you wish to sign a complaint? Sure I do. Oh, well, then, if you were wrong, dearie, there'd be nothing against you but a charge of false arrest, malicious prosecution, and invasion of private rights. That's all. You might get out of it for as little as 100000 in damages. <clears throat> Why don't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> Forget picking him up, Latrivia. I'll get the goods on him myself. He thinks he's trailing me. Well, I'll trail him. Well, what fun. Can I play, too? And if we all join hands, we can keep better track of each other. Well, if that's all you wanted, McGee, I'd better be running along. Uh, Wait a minute. Look out the window, McGee. Huh? Where? Under that big tree across the street. Is that the man? You mean the one looking this way with his hat pulled down over his eyes? That's him. That's the guy. What's he doing? 
It looks like he's focusing a camera on your front door. Uh -huh. If they come out good, I'll take a dozen. <laughs> This is no time for joking, Molly. Look, Latrivia, you walk down the street and we'll see if he follows you. Me? Scared? No. I'll keep my mouth closed so he won't plant a bomb under my bridges. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll call you from my office and see what happens. Oh, we'll be watching. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Goodbye, Mr. Chief. And, uh, Latrivia. Yes? If, if anything happens to you, I... <laughs> Well, I'll always remember you as, as the best mayor we ever had. A friend of the people. He wore no man's collar. Fearless and independent. A credit to his party. <laughs> the working man's Oh, pal. stop it, stop it, for heaven's sake. Nothing's going to happen to me. You watch. Keep an eye on him, McGee. Good luck. Gee, I hope nothing does happen to him. No! Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What, what oh. do you suppose? Oh, my gosh. I completely forgot. Forgot what? When I realized that guy was following me, I strung a rope across the porch steps. <laughs> McGee, that man is still out there. He didn't follow the mayor at all. What did I tell you? It's me he's after. Well, I don't know why he should be interested in you. You don't have any military secrets. And even if you did, everybody knows you couldn't keep them. <laughs> Which may be why you haven't got any. Maybe them guys have discovered what I'm working on. Well, then they're smarter than I am. What are you working on? You won't tell? Certainly not. Okay. I'm working on an idea for the Signal Corps. I'm going to try and breed a triple cross bird. <laughs> Going to cross a homing pigeon with a woodpecker and then cross the result of that with a parrot. With what object in mind? To get a bird that will fly to the right place, knock on the door, and speak the message. <laughs> That's marvelous. <laughs> Why don't you work an ostrich in there, too? Huh? Then if pursued by an enemy, he can stick his head in the sand and they can't hear what he says. Say, maybe you got something. Oh, no. That ain't practical. <laughs> I thought... Uh oh wonder if that's him. No, no. He's still across the street. Come in. Well, I'll be a Horatio K. Boomer. Hello. Mr. Boomer. Good day, my dear. And a messy May morning to you, monkey face. Just what is it that you, that you think you can do us for today, Boomer? Now, that's no way to talk to a guest I'll or anybody maybe. else, McGee. <laughs> maybe Mr. Boomer has a very legitimate reason for this intrusion or this visit. Certainly have, my Pippin, certainly have. Salvaging metal for the government. Wanted to see if you had any gold or silver lying around that you can spare. Gold or silver? That's what I said, pistachio puss. <laughs> now, let me see. We could start with this gold wristwatch of yours, needle nose. Maybe we... Let go of my watch, you nimble-knuckled nephew of Nicodemus. <laughs> we won't give you a thing, Mr. Boomer, unless you have some proper credentials. I'll say not. You're as crooked as a plate of spaghetti. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could nudge the Normandy. <laughs> Let's see your credentials. Why, certainly, certainly. Credentials, credentials, have them right here someplace. <laughs> now, let me see. Uh, here's a fresh package of bubble gum. Take it, my boy. What does he want with bubble gum? Don't know, my dear, but I always carry it in case I meet some little blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> How would I put those credentials? Maybe you forgot to pour, Jenny. No, I spent all yesterday afternoon... I, I'm... Mm, uh, what was I looking for? Oh, yes, credentials. Uh, here's a short length of lead pipe. Had to work on a little drip last night. <laughs> Stubborn fellow. Here's a package of new $10 bills. Say, hey, what's Lincoln's picture doing on a $10 bill? Sure, it ought to be Alexander Hamilton. Isn't that amazing? And that stupid engraver of mine majored in American history at Leavenworth. <laughs> now, where are those credentials? Credentials. Here's a small woman's handbag. <laughs> 
given up trying to take them from large women. <laughs> and uh, a check for a short beer. Well, well, imagine that. No, no credentials. credentials. Uh, uh, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, sorry, we couldn't do any business, my tiresome little Tucson. Better luck next time. Good day, my dear, and cheap cheerio to you, chipmunk. <laughs> Mr. Boomer's been all this time. When a guy like him ain't been seen any place for exactly 90 days, you can draw your own conclusions. <laughs> hey, look, that spy is still out there. I think I'll go out someplace and see if I get followed some more. Oh, no, no. No, don't, McGee. Something might happen. Oh, I can take care of myself. I'll wear my badge. Which one? Junior G-Man or Chicken Inspector? <laughs> Those are just gag badges, Molly. I, I got a deputy sheriff's badge from Peoria. See? Oh. Yeah. You gonna make him follow you all the way to Peoria? <laughs> oh, no. Now, look. Here's what I'll do. I'll walk kind of casual down toward the airport, then out to the steelworks. Hello, and... folks. Hey, what are you looking so serious about? Somebody's been following McGee around, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, and he keeps taking pictures of me. Click, click, click. All day long. <laughs> Every place I go. Oh, who is he? Well, we don't know. McGee thinks he's a foreign spy. Say, that's strange. I had an odd experience last Saturday night myself. Yeah? I followed a suspicious-looking man all over town. Heavenly oh. days, I'm getting the creeps. Who was he, Mr. Wilcox? A spy? That's what I thought. He first attracted my attention when I saw him come out of a doorway, sort of hiding a bundle under his coat. Oh. He looked both ways up the street and then sneaked off down an alley. Oh. Excuse me, boys, while I run up and wash my hair, I might as well do it while it's standing on end. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait. Wait a minute. Maybe Harlow followed the same guy that's been after me. Oh, I don't think so, Fibber. Oh. You see, I followed this fellow to the far side of town. Yeah. Through alleys, up side streets, over fences, and through vacant lots. Well, he could hardly go through a lot that wasn't vacant. <laughs> oh, cut it out, Molly. I want to hear this. Go on, Frank. <laughs> Well, finally, finally he looked around cautiously yeah. and ducked into a garage. I crept up and peeked through the window. I bet he was a bootlegger with a boot for one of his tires, huh? No, sir. No, sir. He took a container of Johnson's car new from under his coat, oh. and in almost no time, he had a dull, dingy-looking jalopy looking like it just came off the sales Ooh. room. <laughs> you know how car new cleans and polishes in one application, gives a beautiful luster with a minimum of effort. Well, sir... Now, oh, wait a minute, Wilcox. What the Sam Hill was he sneaking around town for? Why wasn't he proud to be seen with a container of car new like everybody else? That's what I asked him. He said he didn't want anybody to tell his mother because he was surprising her by polishing her car for Mother's Day. Uh. Uh. McGee, stop gnawing your nails. Well, it was either that or say something the sponsor might regret. Do you have to take advantage of situations like this, Wilcox? Can't you be honest and manly and come right out and sell car new? Oh, the trouble with you, Fibber, is you haven't got any sense of dramatic values. What kind of a story would Robinson Crusoe have been if Victor Hugo hadn't built up the suspense? Well, let me know if your spy is carrying car new, too. Hey, Molly. Yeah? Did Victor Hugo write Robinson Crusoe? Why, of course not. It was written in the first person, so Robinson Crusoe must have written it himself. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. Everybody knows Victor Hugo wrote Sherlock Holmes. No. No, no, dearie. That was Mark Twain. <laughs> what did I say, Victor Hugo? Yeah. <laughs> I meant Mark Twain. Well, anyway... What's the matter? McGee, that man is still there and still watching this house. Oh, he is, is he? Give me my hat. I'm going out and find out. No, no, McGee. Be careful now. Those men are ruthless and cruel, you know. What do you think I am? A Casper milkshake? <laughs> I can handle them. First, I'll chop them across the throat with the edge of my hand like this. Ooh! Ow! Say, if you were as dangerous to other people as you are to yourself, I wouldn't let you out of my sight. 
What are you going to do, McGee? I'm going to take a walk and see if that guy follows me some more. Where are you going? I don't know. Just around town a little. Well, for goodness sakes, be careful now. I don't... Say, what are we whispering for? I don't know what you're whispering for, but I hit myself in the neck so hard I can't talk. I'll be back in a little while. guy still behind us, Molly? Yes, he just ducked into a doorway. I'm glad you decided to come with me after all. Two of us can watch him better than just one. Think he knows we're on to him? Yes, I think he began to suspect something when you stuck your tongue out at him the first time. <laughs> yeah. He even took a picture of that. Click, click, click. <laughs> I'm getting tired of being a photographer's model for a doggone foreign spy. Click, 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 all day long. Yeah. It's getting on my nerves, too, McGee. I really think you ought to call the FBI. Okay, I'll duck into the cigar store down there and call. You wait outside and see what he does. I will not. I'll come in with you and watch him through the window. I'm not going to be kidnapped and taken to Germany on a submarine. <laughs> you know how I get seasick. <laughs> oh, they won't do anything. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. Look who's coming down the street. Mrs. Uppington. I wonder what she's looking so important about. About three quarters of the time, if you'll ask me. Should we tell her about that spy following us? I think we better. He might take her for overage battleship and scuttle her. <laughs> it's unthinkable that she'd be thinkable, though. And we say, ah, oh, hello there, Abigail, darling. Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? And Mr. McGee? Hi, stranger. You know you're in danger? I beg your pardon, Mr. McGee. In danger of what? Look, Abigail, you see that fellow over there? He's a spy. Good heavens, not really. Do you suppose he could have escaped from some Alfred Hitchcock picture? <laughs> Don't take this so lightly, Uppy. For all we know, he may be planning to blow this whole town up tomorrow night. Oh, but he can't do that. Huh? I have a bridge party planned for next Friday. Oh. <laughs> Even Boston couldn't put a war off for a tea party, Abigail. This man is dangerous. You know, he's been following McGee all day long taking pictures and sneaking around like a regular easel. You mean weasel, Molly. Yes, an easel is used for pictures. Well, but... that's what they're using him for. <laughs> now, you be careful, Abigail. You know, he's seen you talking to us, so he may include you in his dirty work. Yeah. I think this whole thing is simply ridiculous. I have a good notion to walk over to him and demand an explanation. Hmm. You won't think that's such a good notion if he pulls a gun on you. That is absurd. It's against the law to discharge firearms within the city limits. Well, maybe so. But now we're telling you, Abigail, he's a dangerous character. Uh, my, well, what should I do? Just walk on unconcerned, Uppy. I'm calling the FBI in a minute. Yeah, just take it easy, Abigail. We'll let you know what happens. Oh, well, thank you very much for warning me. Oh, I do hope this spy is caught. I should be so helpless in a concentration camp. Why you particularly? Well, Mr. McGee... You know how difficult it is for me to concentrate. Well, <laughs> hey, here's the cigar store. I'm going in and phone. You won't be scared. Certainly not. Now go on in and phone. Okay, I'll be right out. Me and my shadow. Da -de -da. Oh, hello there, Mrs. McGee. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. Wimple. Now, don't look now, but there's a foreign spy over there taking our picture. Oh, goodness. Doesn't he look repulsive? Yes. <laughs> McGee's inside the cigar store now, telephoning the FBI. There must be quite a wave of crime and espionage in town, Mrs. McGee. You know, I caught a burglar jimmying his way into our house when I came home last night. Oh, heavenly days, really? What'd you do? I opened the door for him on condition that he'd go in first. <laughs> and did he do it? Yes. <laughs> the poor fellow. <laughs> Sweetie Face thought it was me, and before you could say, where's the iodine, she was shaking salt all over him. Salt? What was that for? Oh, that's just a little joke of Sweetie Face's. She likes to tie people up in knots like a pretzel and then shake salt over them. Oh. <laughs> well, you're lucky you didn't go into the house first. Oh, I don't know, Mrs. McGee. Lately, Sweetie Face has been very nice about my coming in late. 
the minute I tippy-toe in the front door, she gives me my slippers and my pipe and the latest novel. Oh, she does? Yes, right in the face. <laughs> It's okay, Molly. They got an agent on his way over here right now. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. McGee. My, you seem excited. Well, I should think he would be. You better get going, Wimp. There's a federal dick on his way over here, and there's liable to be some gunplay. You better go, too, Molly. I will not. I'll just stand behind this wooden Indian here. I'm really not an Indian, Mrs. McGee. My father... No, no, no. no. (laughs) She meant this cigar store Indian, Wimp. Oh. (laughs) Well, then, if... You don't need me. I'll, I'll be trotting along, folks. I promised to take Sweetie Face to the circus. Oh, really? Does Sweetie Face like circuses? Oh, this is strictly business, Mrs. McGee. One of the gorillas is getting vicious, and they ask Sweetie Face to come over and slap him around a little. <laughs> well... What did the FBI say when you called them up, dearie? Oh, they said they were getting a lot of phony tips these days, but they couldn't afford to ignore any of them, so they said they'd be right away. Hey, look. Heavenly days, look at them. They surrounded that man before he even saw them. Yeah, he's showing them some cards. Uh Uh-oh, they're looking over here. Boy, I bet I get a medal from the government for this. (laughs) Catching a foreign spy is a... McGee, look, they're laughing. What? Yeah. Don't tell me he's got them fooled, too. Well, we'll soon know. Here comes an FBI man. Uh, You, Mr. McGee, did you call the FBI? You're darn right I did, bud. That guy there's been following me around all day, taking pictures. Click, click, click. Every place I went. And where was that? Oh, the Elks Club and the railroad station and the airport and the powerhouse. And that excavation down at 14th and Oak and the softball game on the corner lot at Maple Street. Yes, every place. He's a spy. That's what he is. I beg your pardon, madam. We know that man quite well, and he is not a spy. Oh, no? Well, what is he? He's a photographer for a national magazine. Well, then why has he been following my husband around all day? Well, he told me to tell you he was sorry if he'd caused you any annoyance, but he's working on an assignment. A likely story. What kind of an assignment could that be? Uh, He says they wanted him to get up a picture story on how a small-town busybody spends his time. Any old rags or rubber or metal today, ladies? Have you joined the Scrap Brigade? In this week's issue of Life magazine, there's an advertisement by the makers of Johnson's Wax with suggestions to patriotic housewives on how to salvage valuable scrap materials for war production. You can help your country while you're doing your own spring house cleaning. You'll find suggestions there also on how to make your house cleaning easier all year by the regular use of genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, for protecting your floors, furniture, and woodwork. Wax provides the easy, inexpensive way to take better care of your things. It gives wood, leather, painted surfaces a shield of protection against wear. And as an extra dividend, it gives that much-desired, rich, mellow beauty that you find only in wax-protected homes. There are 100 labor-saving uses for Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, in your home. You can now buy Johnson's Wax also in cream form, specially formulated for the care of furniture and woodwork. Hey, Molly. Yeah. You know what? No, what? I think that guy fooled them government fellas. I still think he's a spy. Oh, you do? Yes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going out for a walk and see if he follows me anymore. Oh, my. Yes, Ladies sir. and gentlemen, those of you who arrived late may remain for the next show. This is where you came in. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> 